Well, hello YouTubers and welcome back to the Holtz Mitchell channel and another tool review. Today is going to be, uh, well, a treat especial. Um, we're going to start getting into chainsaw grinding. And so for this, we have from Gouda the P2300A uh, saw chain grinder. Um, I'll say right off the get-go, this is not a sponsored video in any way, shape, form, or fashion by Gouda. This is just a, uh, one of their tools that I've picked up on eBay for a reasonable price. And uh, I've had one of these before, so I know how they work and uh, can get it set up fairly quick and get it working. So today we're going to just unbox it, take a look what's in the kit, and uh, yeah, just get it set up and get it ready to go. Um, we'll go through some of the steps and then in tomorrow's video or the next video coming up we're going to actually go through and sharpen a chainsaw chain and um, give you guys an idea of how that's done. I realize this video is, is long overdue so bear with me. I'm doing the best that I can with what I have to work with. Uh, today's video is being recorded on the old camera being how I forgot to grab the new camera this morning when I left for work. and. Uh, some of the close-up footage is going to be done with the other leg rear that I have uh, where it has doesn't have the external microphone jack. It's, um, it's not a bad quality camera, uh, but it, uh, for, for what we'll be doing here, it'll be good enough, uh, at least for the, for the setup for the, um, and the unboxing. For the grinding tomorrow, uh, we'll definitely have the new camera because there are some details in there that you really need to see. and. Uh, that camera can pick that up quite a bit better than any of these old clunkers uh, will. So anyway, with that, let's get to unboxing this thing. Uh, first off, this uh, the slogans that they have on here uh, makes me chuckle a little bit. It says, quality tools, we set standards. Um, a word of advice to Gouda if anybody from that outfit's watching. Uh, if I were you guys, that's not something I'd put on your box. Uh, we know that this stuff comes from the same factory in China that, you know, a lot of other uh, outfits. There's several of these um, grinders on the market from Einhell, from um, Fescher, from uh, Gouda, of course. Now the Oregon uh, model, it comes from the same factory, it's the same machine, it just has a few more doodads on it that this one doesn't have. I just wanted one that was as basic as possible. Um, with the little eccentric uh, lever on it that uh, arrests the, you know, the, the, the chain clamp so that way uh, you know it's easy to maintain. Uh, some of the other models, a little more expensive ones, have like a, a chain or, or a, a handbrake on a bicycle that when you pull on the lever to actually pull the head down you can pull that brake and it pinches the chain so the chain actually stays in place. How good it is, I don't know. Um, to me, it just seems a little bit extraneous. Um, for those of you who like that sort of thing, by all means, you know, hey, if it works for you, go for it. I'm not going to knock it. But for me, I want to keep this thing as basic as possible. So anyway, let me switch to the other camera here and uh, we'll get to unboxing this pig and setting it up and seeing what all's in it. So it looks like this box has been opened before by somebody else because the original factory seal here has been broken. Uh, the unit came, the box came damaged anyway. Um, but let's hope that uh, what's inside is up to snuff. Now, as I said before, uh, here's their, their slogan. Um, makes me chuckle. I'll uh, put some stills at the end of the at the end of the video so that uh, folks can get some better ideas, you know, and you can pause the video to, to kind of take a better, closer look at uh, some of the 
parts that are involved with this. Uh, let's see, we have two discs, the poop sheet here, the instruction manual. Here's the base of it. Some cardboard, more cardboard. Here's the toolkit. Now, interestingly enough, the dealer said there wasn't going to be a toolkit in here. There is a depth gauge, or better, better said, um, you've got a gauge here that um, it's for profiling your, your grinding wheel uh, for different chain sizes. You got 7 16 half in, to half inch. Um, I'll, uh, like I say, I'll, I'll put some, some stills at the end of the video here. Let me pull this critter out here so you guys can get a better idea what I'm talking about here. So here we have the profile gauge right here and then file sizes and then uh, So here we have the head, the base, some knobs and a handle, the toolkit, as I said before, uh, with the profile gauge. Um, then there's a stone in here to profile your, your grinding wheel and then two Allen head screw or two Allen wrenches so that you can uh, kind of take this guy apart and set it up. So first order of business is to ascertain the hole distance. There's holes here in the base that uh, you can screw this to a workbench. Um, there's some feet on the side here, right here, that uh, this is the most forward most position that you, you know, or the edge right here. Again, stills at the end of the video uh, to where you can actually position this thing on the edge of the, of the workbench or table or or a tripod, whatever you're going to mount it on uh, in order to make it work. So we need to figure out what the distance is between these two holes here and that is per exactly I'm figuring it's going to be a nominal size in metric and it looks to be it looks to be da -da -da -da, 95 millimeters so that's not quite four inches. That's um, I'll put I'll put it in in uh, decimal inches down below in the screen, so you guys working with uh, with imperial measurements can uh, follow along with that. So let's see here. We have the head, and that goes on the base here. So we've got the knobs. Here's the handle for actuation <coughs> and the setting knob for the angle, the dangle of the angle. <coughs> so as you can see here, there is a hole right here in the base of the machine uh, that has a hex head in it so that way you can take this bolt and stick that head hex head in there. So let's slap this dirty pick together which isn't going to take much. <clears throat> Screw goes through the half moon slot up here and then there's a pin on the bottom of the head right here and it goes into this hole right here. So that's all we have for that. So then we have the washer. It's a little awkward here. Normally this wouldn't take me as long. I'm just doing all this for the camera, so it's uh, a little awkward here getting it going. So then we can set it all up. So now the next step is to shake out the tool kit here and put on the grinding disc. Now all we got to do here is take off this cover. Now these can be kind of a pain in the butt. Uh, they're awful brittle so you got to be careful.
just take that out of the way. And then you have right access to the hub. Now, I will say this, these motors are notoriously bad. And there's really not much you can do with them. Um, unfortunately, uh, this handle goes in up here. So we'll go ahead and stick that on there for right now. So now we'll put on a disc. And being how we're going to be running uh, 3 8 chain, uh, we'll be putting on the thicker disc. And lo and behold, it's already been pre-profiled, which is kind of nice. That's a surprise. Um, doesn't say where these discs are made, but uh, now yeah, it's probably the, like the rest of the machine made in China. So then you just slip it up in there, stick it on there. Now one thing you got to watch for when you got these flanges going here is that on the discs you have um, a piece of cardboard. This is a piece of plastic or a piece of cardboard, something that's uh, flexible or soft, that's pliable, that will keep the flange from actually snapping uh, the disc as you tighten it up, because uh, that's always a problem. So you have, like I say, two discs here. This is for a smaller chain. This is for like uh, 325 um, and, and smaller chain. and. Uh, this is for like 3 8 and 404. So now we got a iron chips here in the in the hole of the arbor. <laughs> Chinese quality boy. You just hold the, the disc with two fingers and then you just kind of tighten the, uh, the arbor up. Just hand tight. You don't really have to put a lot of gronk on it. You don't really need a, a whole lot of gronk. Um, about wrist tight is good enough. And so the last one I had of these, the thing was uh, pretty bad as far as the, the noise it made. So let's uh, undo the cord here and plug this pig in and see how it does for uh, background noise. Looks like we've got about oh five feet of cord that's about a meter fifty. So you want to make sure you you place this thing either close to an outlet somewhere or have an extension cord when you run it because otherwise you're gonna be pulling your hair out trying to get power to this thing. I've got one of those little teeny tiny metal chips in my finger that really drives you crazy. So I'm just going to set this on the edge of the table. I'm not going to tighten it down just yet. I'm just going to hold it and turn it on right shortly and see how it Okay, we've got a, a slight vibration as you can hear. That might clean out. That might uh, that might disappear with uh, when we dress the stone. So anyway, I'm going to shut the camera off here real quick and uh, drill two holes in the table so that we can um, bolt this thing down. So we've got this thing mounted to the table. Um, I've got this one screw here. You know, I can't quite turn it all the way in. Uh, these holes are so precisely placed that uh, unless your hole that you drill into the table is perfectly straight, the screws won't uh, won't take. But I got one over here that's all the way down, good enough uh, for what we're doing here. So anyway, <clears throat> um, these take a an M8 screw, and I like to say the holes are fairly tight. These are like an 8.1 millimeter hole, uh, which is a tad bit too tight for something like this. Um, I'm guessing it's because the uh, the lacquer, the powder coating that 
went into the thing. Normally these should be at least an eight and a half to nine millimeter hole if you're gonna do this. Um, so you might wanna drill this out a little bit to uh, make it fit a little better. So three, uh, three, uh, three eighths. <coughs> an eight millimeter, an M8 is roughly about a five sixteenth screw. So five sixteenths should fit quite comfortably in here for those of you working in Imperial. So <coughs> anyway, we're gonna go on here to the chain holding part of this. Um, we'll just go through the thing here real quick. Uh, here we have this eccentric lever that pinches the chain. Back here's a little screw that pushes the anvil forward so that when you push this in, uh, you get different chain thicknesses or driver thicknesses, say like uh, a 1.5 millimeter, which is a, uh, a 50 gauge, or you get um, a 1.6 millimeter, which is uh, a 63 gauge. And so um, you want to be able to uh, pinch your tooth or the driver of the chain effectively. And then you can do that by running this little screw back here in towards the, the uh, opposite side of the anvil. And then that way you can get uh, a positive lock on your chain. Now the other thing is, uh, let's see, there's no, 1.3 millimeter is a 50 gauge, 1.5 millimeter is a 58 gauge, and then uh, a 1.6 millimeter is a 63 gauge. So, and this will take up to a 404 chain. So that way you're good to go on just about all your chain sizes. Uh, the only time you really need to run this in is if you're running something really small like a 325 chain and have to be able to, to pinch it. Now you can also use this to center your, um, your chain on the, on the disc. Um, if you, for example, uh, when you notice one side is getting a little longer than the other, uh, that may very well mean that your chain um, isn't centered on the disc. And so that way you can kind of use this to center your chain as well. So then here you have the pawl that you pull the chain up against. We'll be going over this in the, uh, the how-to video on how to use this thing. So I'm just gonna go over it just very briefly. Um, in this one, it's, it's a little sloppy, but it'll do the job. Um, the critical thing is that you have a backstop here. You have uh, uh, the setting, the set screw here that pushes the thing that uh, the chain forward or, or allows it to come back a little further. And then you have a jam nut here to hold that uh, so that you can get a uniform grind on all your teeth. And down here you have, of course, your, um, your protractor. And this unit also allows you, now this one has been modified. Uh, there's, I'll show you uh, a little later. There's a spring here in the knob that, that turns this whole head, that uh, uh, fixes this whole head, I should say. So that you can't over tighten the, the, the screw. I don't think that's really all that good of an idea. Um, because you, there's going to be times where you're going to need to really cinch that pig down. Uh, otherwise, this whole thing might want to turn on you. Now, you can also uh, adjust the pitch side to side slightly on this. I don't recommend doing it <coughs> unless you're trying to uh, get a fancy grind on it, something like that, um, for your standard chisel bit chain that's ground. Uh, round ground, um, the straight old setting will just do just fine. But anyway, here's your protractor from zero to 35 degrees. Um, the angle of repros on most materials is, is 35 degrees, which is, is what this goes up to. Um, the recommended setting for just about any chain um, is 30 degrees. Uh, that's a good all round uh, pitch for your tooth. So that way you can cut just about anything. You can cut hardwoods, you can set, cut softwoods. Now if you're cutting exclusively softwoods, you can go to a 35 degree and uh, you'll do fine. But as soon as you go into hardwoods, you'll find that your chain is gonna bite a little hard and uh, you won't, you'll just be rattling teeth out of your head trying to get your chain to go through, through a log. So up here we've got a depth stop. Uh, we'll have to run this all out a little bit. 
and this allows the head to uh, go down as far as you want it to go. Again, there's the jam nut. Um, we'll set this up to do the grinding again tomorrow on the on the next video. Uh, the one thing I did notice uh, the um, the grinding wheel here has. I'm not sure if it's in the arbor. I'm going to have to wait wait and see. But the grinding wheel has a little bit of a uh, a dip to it. It looks like I don't know if it's the grinding wheel or if it's the arbor. But when you run this thing, it uh, it really hums pretty bad. So there's you know something going on there with the grinding wheel that shouldn't be going on. And of course, you can see there's a light here with this thing, which is kind of nice when you're grinding. Um, Yeah, you can see that that dip in the wheel. I might be able to dress it out. I don't know. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see. So anyway, then there's a protractor on the other side of this. Let me move the camera around here. So back here is a protractor as well. Um, you want about 30 degrees uh, of a pitch. Of course, that says 60 because right now we're at 90, which is, is vertical. And if you lean this thing forward, you're going to want uh, about a 60 degree pitch. And this thing doesn't really like, these things are a little bit tricky to get to set right. So there we go. Now it's, and as you can see, there's a lot of slop and play in here. This thing has a lot of give to it. I'm going to have to probably make a new base. And uh, if I want to keep this thing as is. So back up here is your on off switch. It's kind of hard to, to really get that thing to, to get in there. So you're going to have to really push a little harder. But uh, that's the on off switch. And as I said before, the light comes on with when you turn on the when you turn on the motor. So one of the things, one of the features of this machine is that you have quite a bit of slop in the head, which means uh, you're going to have to put constant pressure uh, one way or the other on the head uh, when you're grinding. Um, I'm probably going to have to try and correct this somehow or another by. Tighten it up as much as I can. Um, this is, uh, yeah, this is all in the base of it here. So this portion of it up here and this back part, they're flexing so much that uh, you're really not going to get much of a an accurate grind. These are unfortunately not very good machines. Um, do I recommend buying them? Uh, for the money, you know, you get what you pay for. Um, I wish there was better ones on the market for that kind of money, but unless you go into the pro grade from like Sylvie or Symington, uh, with those machines, you're looking at about $1,600 uh, versus, you know, 76, you know, $76 uh, for one of these things. So, you know, as I said, you get what you pay for. Well, YouTubers, that's a wrap for this tool review of the Gouda P2300A uh, saw chain grinder. Again, this is uh, not a, an expensive machine. It's not the most uh, qualitative, you know, it's qualitatively not the best machine on the market. Uh, you know, like I said, price-wise, you get what you pay for. For 76 bucks, uh, you really can't expect much. Yes, there are cheaper grinders on the market. Um, there are also some more expensive ones. The pros, of course, use the, uh, you know, I used to have a Sylvie Razor Sharp 2, uh, which I could do not only uh, round ground, but uh, the square ground, square grind chain as well. So that was a uh, insanely expensive machine, uh, brand new. They, they run about $1,600 now. You can get them from Symington, although Sylvie is out of business now. You can still get parts from them uh, through Madsen's uh, in Oregon. Uh, but other than that, 
they're they're off the market. You might run across to use them once in a while. Who knows? You might even find my stolen one. Um, if you do, there's a, a weld on the base plate behind the motor, so where it goes to the tripod. So if you if you run across one that's been welded, give me a holler. <laughs> Although I I seriously doubt anybody's ever going to find it. Anyway. Um, as we can see, this is uh, you know just a basic little chain grinder. Uh, not much for your money. Not much money for the thing. Um, how it's going to perform, we shall see in the following video. So, anyway, with that, we're going to bring this video to a close. I do thank all the subscribers that have came on board, and uh, also keep you know the the subscribers who keep coming back to you know see what's going on in the channel. Um, for those of you out there who are new to the channel and uh, would like to help out in some meaningful way, by all means let the ads play. I had to monetize the channel. Uh, it was a decision I didn't take lightly, but uh, if you allow the ads to play, you know, go grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup, you know, a, a, you know, a cup of tea or a beer or, or soda pop, whatever, you know, beverage of choice you might have. By all means, let's go do that in the time that the ads play, and then uh, I try to keep them out of the the middle of the the videos as much as I can. When they get a little long, it's you know probably not a bad idea to throw an ad in there to kind of break up the monotony a little bit. So um, you know your attention span kind of gets a little little after about 20 minutes. So when you get a longer video, it's probably not a bad idea to throw an ad in there. Um, I realize not everybody likes it. Um, like I said, it's just one of those things I had to monetize for uh, various reasons, and so this is the way uh, I thought I might be able to support the channel and, and do the things I need to do. But anyway, that's a wrap for this episode. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for the follow-up video uh, in the logging series on how to grind chain and how to set these things up. We kind of gave this thing, uh, you know, just a, a brief setup for the time being, but tomorrow's video is going to be one of those ones where, or, you know, we get down to the nitty gritty. So with that, we'll see y'all again soon.